Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This should be, this is part 10 of Colonel Jack Moore's uh, identifying Israel, the marks of Israel. This should be the last one. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, Colonel Moore writes, and by the way, I'm going to, uh, this is only going to go on BitChute and Odyssey. I'm giving up on Rumble. So, uh, when have the Jews ever had a new name? The Bible declares that Israel's name is to be changed. And Israel was not only to have a new name, but also a new language. Hmm. So let's take a look at those very things and we'll figure it out. I'm going to try to keep this safe for you know who tube so that I can post it on there. So if I talk in C-O-D-E, you'll understand why. All right, let's go to the book of Isaiah. Uh, let's take a look. All right, let's go to the Minor Prophets first. I was thinking we're going, we're going to hit Isaiah next, but Zephaniah, Z-E-P-H-A-N-I-A-H. -H. We're going to chapter 3 and verse, oh, I guess we'll start in 7. I said, surely thou wilt fear, fear me. Speaking of the Lord, surely thou wilt fear me. Thou wilt receive instruction. So their dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever I punished them, but they rose, rose early and corrupted all their doings. Well, that sounds like modern day, formerly Christian nations of the West, right? Verse 8. Therefore wait ye upon me, saith the Lord, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations that I may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation indignation means extreme hatred that i may assemble the kingdoms to pour upon them mine indignation even all my fierce anger for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy uh in second peter we read about the earth being destroyed by fire. See, the first time in the days of Noah, chapter 6 of Genesis, the Lord flooded the earth, gave the earth a baptism. I guess you could say kind of like a bath, right? A shower. <laughs> yeah. He uh, wiped out all the evil. Well, maybe most of it. And... Um, yeah, but the next time is going to be fire, and he's not going to miss a thing. And I have an entire playlist on fire. Fire the Lord, yeah. You know, the Bible talks a lot about fire. So, uh, here's the punchline, verse 9. So after the, uh, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy, for then will I turn to the people a pure language. I suspect it's going to be Hebrew. That they may all call upon the name of the Lord to serve him with one consent. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, suppliants even the daughter of my dispersed shall bring mine offering. All right, let's go to hit Isaiah. All right, Isaiah 62, verse 1. 
For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. Now remember, Jesus said he was the light of the world, right? Uh, until the righteousness go uh, thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And where do we find salvation? Only in the blood of Jesus. Absolutely. And the Gentiles, same word as nations, and the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name. And thou shalt be called by a new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Now, collectively, I believe this is going to be uh, Christians. You know, we're they're not known by Hebrews anymore. So I think it's going to be Christians. However, individually, the Lord is going to give his people a new name. And where do we find that? In the book of Revelation. Uh, Revelation 3.12. Jesus says, Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And listen to this carefully. And I will write upon him my new name. But let's take a second witness. And let's see. How about Revelation 2.17? This is what I was looking for. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. To him that overcometh will I give to eat of the hidden manna, and will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, which no man knowing knoweth. And I will give him a white stone, and in the stone a new name written, a new name written, which no man knoweth, saving he that receiveth it. So individually, we're going to be given a new new name for those of uh, for those who are considered worthy to get the stone from the Lord. I pray that I'm found worthy for the new stone. All right, let's see what else we got. So, what is this new name collectively for Israel? Well, First Peter four sixteen, Paul, Peter writes. Yet if any man suffer, suffer as a Jew, no. If any man suffer as a Israelite, no. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. You know, there's Antichrist that will actually tell you that Christian is a, a satanic heathen name. Oh, yeah. And they'll even tell you that the name Jesus comes from Zeus. And it means earth pig. Oh, so to, to them, Jesus is a pig that came from the earth. Well, and, and these are your Hebrew roots sacred name people. You ever run into these people, I advise you, run. Don't walk away, run. Because they will send you to hell with them. So, all right, let's go to Acts 26. Um, let's see. I could read almost this whole chapter. Uh, all right, let's read, uh, let's read the entire uh, 
chapter 26 of Acts. Acts chapter 26. Um, Paul's been arrested and he wants an audience with the, uh, the king and uh, to state his case. Verse 1. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the hand and answered for himself. I think myself happy, King Agrippa, King Agrippa, because I shall answer for myself this day before thee, touching all the things whereof I'm accused of the Jews, especially because I know thee to be expert in all customs and questions which are among the Jews. Therefore I beseech thee to hear me patiently. My manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. Bob's note here. Paul was being trained to be a rabbi from a very young age. He even sat at the feet of a, a, a renowned rabbi by the name of Gamaliel. And I've actually read a little bit of Gamaliel's uh, writings. I was impressed, you know, but yeah, who am I? Nobody. So, verse five, verse four. Uh, my manner of life from my youth, which was at the first among mine own nation at Jerusalem, know all the Jews. Yeah, they all knew me. Verse 5. Which knew me from the beginning, if they would testify that after the most straightest sect of our religion, I lived a Pharisee. And now I stand and am judged for the hope of the promise of God, uh, 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 for the hope of for the hope of the promise made of God unto our fathers. Unto which promise our 12 tribes, not just the Jews, only one tribe, well, and not even all of them are of the tribe, but there's 11 other tribes. Of course, to the modern church world, they're lost. But Paul knew they were out there. God hasn't lost his people. Oh, the modern church world has, but God hasn't. Verse 7, which unto promise our 12 tribes instantly serving God night and day hope to come for which hope's sake, King Agrippa, I am accused of the Jews. Why should it be thought a thing incredible with you that God should raise the dead? I verily thought with myself that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. No, that I ought to do many things contrary to the name of Jesus of Nazareth, which thing I also did in Jerusalem, and many of the saints did I shut up in prison, having received authority from the chief priests. These are not Catholic priests. And when they were put to death, I gave my voice against them. Huh. Bob's note here. And the modern church world thinks they're too good to suffer what these people suffered in the past. Uh, we're never going to see that because God loves us and we're special and we're going to have the pre-trib rapture. Uh, I don't think so. But, hey, who am I? Verse 11. And I punished them oft in every synagogue and compelled them to blaspheme and being exceeding, exceedingly mad against them, I persecuted them even unto strange cities. Whereupon, as I went to Damascus with authority and commission from the chief priests, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun shining round about me and them which journeyed with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, see, Paul's recounting his journey to Damascus, his conversion. And people will tell you that Paul's a fake. Uh, you know, I guess, uh, I guess the book of Acts is all wrong. I guess the Holy Spirit failed 
to tell the apostles, the other, the other 10 or 11 apostles, that Paul was a fake. Yeah, the Holy Spirit failed to tell the other apostles that Paul was a fake. Right. And the book of Acts is wrong. Right. Stay away from Hebrew roots, people. They're devils. They're possessed of the devil. They're probably devil children. Verse 14. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Yeshua HaMashiach. No. And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuteth. But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in the which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee from the people and from the Gentiles, nations, unto whom now I send thee, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance from them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Boy, this sounds like a false apostle, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Talking about darkness to light, from the power of Satan to God, forgiveness of sins, justified and sanctified by faith. And these people dare to tell you that Paul's fake? Tell them to go to hell. Verse 19. Wherefore, O King Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles, or nations, that they should repent. Repent. Boy, that's a dirty word in church nowadays. Do you know they even teach that teaching people that repentance does not mean turning from sin? Oh, that just means to change your mind from unbelief to belief. So the devil just has to turn from not believing in Jesus to be believing in Jesus? The devil believes in Jesus. You think God wants us to turn from sin or just believe in Christ? The devils believe in Christ. Read James chapter 2. The devils absolutely believe in Christ. God wants us to turn from our sin. If you believe in the Lord, you should be obedient unto him. And then they'll tell you, oh, well, if you do that, you're earning your salvation. They actually have a, a buzzword called Lordship Salvation. I'll be happy when a lot of those devils end up in hell. And the Lord says, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. No. Paul says that they should repent and turn to God and do works meet for repentance. What do you mean do works meet for repentance? Jesus said if you got two coats to give one to somebody that doesn't have one. Yeah. You got two coats, give one give one of your coats to somebody who has zero. That's works for meat for repentance. 21s. Verse 21. For these causes the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to kill me. Oh no, no, no. That Bob, Chaplain Bob. That was the Romans. The King James Bible's mistranslated, they'll tell you. I don't think so. I think the King James Bible is right on the money. Verse 22. Having therefore obtained help of God, I continue unto this day, witnessing both the small and great, saying none other things than those which the prophets of Moses did say should come, that Christ should suffer. Did Christ suffer? Oh, yeah. But, but pre-trib rapture people think they're, too, they're better than the Lord Jesus Christ, that they should have to suffer. Oh, no. 
that Christ should suffer and that he should be the first that should rise from the dead and should show light unto the people and to the Gentiles, the nations, the nations of Israel. And as he thus spake for himself, Festus said with a loud voice, Paul, thou art beside thyself. Much learning doth made thee, make thee mad. When somebody says you're beside yourself, they're basically saying you're crazy. He says, much learning doth make thee mad. Paul, verse 25. But he said, but Paul, but he said, Paul, I am not mad, most noble Festus, but speak forth the words of truth and soberness. For the king knoweth of, of these things, before whom also I speak freely. For I am persuaded that none of these things are hidden from him. For this thing was not done in a corner. Believe me, all these people knew about Christ and what was going on. They, they heard everything. Paul says in verse 27, King Agrippa, believest thou the prophets? I know that thou believest. Listen to this carefully, carefully, carefully. Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Almost persuadest thou to me to be a Christian. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. And Paul said, Oh no, don't say that terrible, horrible word, Christian. That's evil. Uh, no. And Paul said, I would to God. I would to God that not only thou... Not only you, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and altogether such as I am, except these bonds. Paul saying, I wish every single one of you was a Christian like I was. There's your new name, people. It's not Israelites. It's not Hebrews. A new name, collectively, for Israel. Read Galatians 3.29, Paul. And if ye be Christ, then are ye, not become, not spiritual seed. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. You don't become spiritual seed. You don't become Abraham's children. Ye are Abraham's children. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Do you hear the voice of Christ? I do. I may not be obedient like I should, but, you know. All right, let's go to uh, Isaiah 65. All right, Isaiah 65 and verse 14. Oh, this is a good one. 14 and 15 and 16, 17 and 18. Oh, we're going to read this. Oh, this is wonderful. And like I mentioned, I've done an entire commentary on Isaiah. And you know what? Isaiah, uh, when you look at Isaiah, it is... It's like a mini Bible in one book. It's like the first few chapters are like the Old Testament, and then the end time chapters, uh, especially the last couple chapters of Isaiah, look like uh, the book of Revelation where God's people get the new heaven and new earth. Uh, it's just, take a look at it. There's a guy that did a um, Isaiah, the mini Bible, I got it on my, the first, a link to it on the first video of my Isaiah playlist. Absolutely wonderful work. Um, and when I went to Bible college, Isaiah was my favorite uh, Bible study they did. A lot of the other stuff they did was garbage, you know. And I didn't, I, be honest, I did not learn a lot in Bible college. I really didn't. I only got went to Bible college because I got tired of people throwing 
Uh, Bob, what do you know? I went to Bible college. I got a doctorate degree. You know, so what? Uh, you got taught by heretics. So, all right. Shut up, Bob. Preach or teach. Isaiah 65 and verse 14. Think of Christ when we're reading this. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart. When Christ comes, people, there's not going to be any wickedness on this earth. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but ye shall cry for sorrow of heart and shall howl for vexation of spirit. He's talking about those that have rejected the Lord. They're going to cry for sorrow of heart and howl for vexation of spirit. Verse 15. And ye shall leave your name, Jew, and ye shall leave your name for a curse. What? And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee, those that reject Christ, and call his servants by another name. Christians collectively and then the white stone individually, right? Let's read that again. Verse 15, Isaiah 65, 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. That he who blesseth himself in the earth shall bless himself in the God of truth. And he that sweareth in the earth shall swear by the God of truth. Because the former troubles are forgotten... The former troubles are forgotten, and because they are hid from mine eyes. Remember in the book of Revelation, Jesus says he will wipe away all tears from their eyes. Well, what a day that'll be. Verse 17. For behold, I create new heavens and a new earth, and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mine. But be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which I create. For behold, I create Jerusalem a rejoicing and her people a joy. And I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. And the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her, nor the voice of crying. Wow. Wow. Unbelievable, huh? All right, we're going to read Hosea chapter 1, the whole chapter, I guess. It's a short one. I got an entire playlist on the book of Hosea. It's such a love story, people. I don't know why, you know, all these idiots that call themselves, Oh, I'm a New Testament Christian. No, you're not. You're, you're a fool. The entire Bible, from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation chapter 22, is our book of our people. So, verse 1. Hosea 1.1 1, 1. The word of the Lord came that came unto Hosea, the son of Beri, in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. What? Wait a minute. I've always... They always tell us Jew and Israel is the same thing. Well, here it is. You got a kings of Judah and then a king of Israel. What? This don't make sense. I'm confused. Yeah, because you listen to TBN where they lie to you. Israel and Judah are not the same. They had different kings, different capitals, different land areas. They even fought wars against each other. Oh, the Jews are all of Israel, and they fought each other. What? It, you know, it's just, they're idiots. Or, no, they're not idiots. They're deceivers. How in the world can you have eight years of Bible college, a doctorate degree, and not know this stuff? You had to have read the Bible at least once. 
How can you not know this stuff? No, you have to be a member of the lodge. And uh, yeah, either that or maybe the Lord blinded their eyes. I don't know. Verse 2. The beginning of the word of the Lord by Hosea. And the Lord said to Hosea, Go, take unto thee a wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredom, departing from the Lord. Hosea figuratively is like the Lord, and the wife of whoredoms and children of whoredoms figuratively is Israel and Judah. Because, let's face it, the Lord was married, to, considered himself married to Israel, his wife, and she ran off to be a whore with every satanic god there was under the sun. Uh, that's the best way I can, yeah. Verse 3. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, which conceived and bare him a son. Gomer. Hmm. Anybody watch the TV show Gomer Pyle, USMC? Uh, did you know he was a... Um, Let's just say he preferred men and avoided women. It's funny how they took his name for a, a female. Yeah, I don't even want to go there. Let's just say that uh, the neighbor, Jim, who was the star of that show, uh, seriously, he liked men. Yeah. So, men never interested in me. So, and I did have a couple of uh, opportunities, but uh, I quite frankly shot that down real fast. So, no thank you. And I didn't even believe in this stuff back then. Nope, wrong equipment, buddy. Go away. So, verse 4. Oh, uh, no, I'm sorry. Verse 3. So she, so he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblam, which conceived and bare him a son. And the Lord said unto him, Call his name Jezreel, for ye a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and will cause to cease the kingdom of the house of Israel. Uh, Jehu was a general or a captain in King Ahab, you know, Ahab and Jezebel. And he killed, uh, he turned against his master and cleansed the land, I think, but then he turned evil. Something like that. So uh, if you want to, you could read it in the book of Kings and Chronicles. Verse 5. And it shall come to pass at that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. And she, Gomer, conceived again and bare a daughter. And God said unto him, Call her name Lo Ruhama, for I will no more have mercy upon the house of Israel, but I will utterly take them away. And God did. God took them to um, Samaria, was taken to the Assyrian Empire. Verse 7 But I will have mercy upon the house of Judah, whose capital was Jerusalem, not Samaria, and will save them by the Lord their God. And will not save them by bow, nor by sword, nor by battle, by horses, nor by horsemen. Now when she had weaned lo Ruhama, she conceived and bare a son. Then said God, Call his name lo -am -I, For ye are not my people. Woo! For ye are not my people. And I will not be your God. Verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place, Jerusalem, that in the place, that in the place where it was said unto them, ye are not by people, there it shall be said unto them, ye are the sons of the living God. Well, that only applies to those that are born again of the Holy Spirit by having faith and justification, sanctification in the, blood, in the love and blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 11. 
Then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, Christ. <laughs> well, God the Father is going to appoint the head, but, uh, you know, yeah. All right, Christ is the candidate. Do you want to vote for him? Uh, I vote yes. I vote for him to be king. And Lord of lords and king of kings. Um, then shall the children of Judah and the children of Israel be gathered together and appoint themselves one head, and they shall come up out of the land. For great shall be the day of Jezreel. Yeah, I like this. You know, early in my days of studying Hosea, man, I'm telling you, this book is so neglected. You just don't see people, well, wolves claiming to be pastors. You, you don't see them reading out of this because people might make the connection up between who they are. All right, let's go to Romans 9, verse 18. Uh, we could read this whole chapter. Now remember, Romans, you know, God has uh, had Paul write the book of Romans to the Israelites that were in Rome. I mean, you know, most of these so-called churches and pastors, they exist only to hide the truth from God's people, to confuse us. That is their job. All right, Romans 9, 18. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. God's going to have mercy on whom he wants to have mercy. And whom he will, he hardeneth. Wow. That sort of puts a nail in the coffin of that whosoever will garbage. You know, some people think, oh, you just will your way to salvation. Uh-uh. If God hardens your heart, you will never, ever come to Christ. You want proof of that? How about Jesus as a witness? John chapter 14 and verse 6. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me, I'm sorry, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Oh, that wasn't what I was looking for. Hold on. Uh, here we go. John 6, 44. No man can come to me. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. If God the Father doesn't send you to Christ, ain't going to happen. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. Uh, I'm going to raise him up before the pre-trib rapture? Uh, no. No, 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 no. Romans 9, 18. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will he hardeneth, Thou wilt say then unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against God? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Hath not the powder, hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor? And another unto dishonor. And I believe this is in direct reference to um, Isaac. You had Abraham, Isaac, and Isaac had two sons. Jacob, who became Israel, and Esau, who became Edom. And God hated Esau, and God loved Jacob. They were of one lump and one vessel to honor and another and to dishonor. I got an entire playlist on why God hated Esau. And the black Hebrews, so-called, will tell you, well, yeah, whitey man. Uh, Esau, he beat a whitey man. 
uh, the whites? You mean the whites that translated and printed the Bibles, that built all the churches, that built civilizations have all over the world? We're Esau? We're the best farmers in the world? Really? Really? What is what is what has Sub-Sahara Africa ever done for Christ? If somebody knows, please let me know, because I, I can't find it anywhere. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? What if God, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? Whoa, vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. What do you think Judas Iscariot was? Vessels of wrath fitted to destruction. I did an entire uh, a Bible study on the son of perdition. Actually, there was two of them. Judas was one. The other son of perdition is going to be the man of sin. So, I got a lot of old Bible studies, people. A lot. About 10 years worth. Verse 23. That he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. Be a vessel of mercy. If God has called you, come to Christ. Vessels of mercy. That's what I found. That's what I needed. And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had afore prepared unto glory. Even us whom he hath called, not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. And we're not talking about the, when we're talking about the Jews, we're not talking about the sin of Gog of uh, say tan you know when you're out in the sun and your skin gets brown you know a tan yeah yeah not them not the second chapter of revelation and then uh verse uh seven eight nine yeah no 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 not them even us whom he hath called, not only not of the Jews only, but also of the Gentiles. Verse 25. Here's the punchline. As he saith also in O.C. O.C. is the Greek rendering of Hosea. And he says, I will call them my people, which were not my people. Why? Because in Jeremiah 3.8, God said he divorced Israel. But in Jeremiah 31, 31, he says he would give them a new covenant to the house of Judah and to the house of Israel. Look it up. Jeremiah 3, 8, Jeremiah 31, 31. And I hope when I give you these chapters and verses, you read along with me. You know, I don't want people saying, oh, Chaplain Bob's just pulling verses out of context. You know, you can make the Bible say almost anything you want if you uh, say it out of context. Um, I try not to do that. I will call them my people, which were not my people, and her beloved, which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place, Jerusalem, that in the place where it was said of them, ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah, which is uh, the Greek rendering of Isaiah, Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. Have you ever heard somebody say, oh uh, man, uh, he made a short work of that. In other words, it got done really quick, right? You know, like, uh, uh, yeah, well, yeah. 
You know, it's amazing how many sayings are in the Bible, uh, in the English language that comes from the Bible. It's amazing. Uh, let's see. All right, I think we're going to go to 1 Peter chapter 2. Did we read this already? 1 Peter chapter 2. All right, here's a good one. Yeah, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1. Boy, I love Peter, too. Uh, you know, of all the Bible characters in the New Testament, I can really relate to Peter. I, I really can. He's, I, I don't know, I, I think I'm more like him than any of the others. I'm certainly not like Paul, that's for darn sure. Peter was flawed in a lot of ways, but hopefully I can be as faithful as he was toward the end. Verse 1, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby. If so be, ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Amen to that. To whom coming as unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. And who is this stone? Well, let's take a look. All right, let's read this. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Paul again. You know, the people that hate Paul, because Paul proves that the Corinthians were Israelites who were with Israel, with Moses. This is why they, they hate Paul, because they want you to think that the Antichrists are God's chosen people. Seriously. You know, I don't know how much longer I have on this earth. I really don't. But, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Verse 1, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I would not that ye should be ignorant. Ignorant, a lack of knowledge. That's what I'm trying to help people with here, to, so that they won't be ignorant. Their lack of knowledge. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. If you read in the book of Exodus, a cloud guided Israel by day. When the cloud stood still, everybody made camp. When the cloud started to move, everybody broke camp and they followed the cloud. The cloud told Moses and them where to go. And then by night, it was a pillar of fire. Uh, how that all our fathers were under the cloud. Well, it was Israel that was under the cloud. And Paul's telling them, the Corinthians, that how all that all our fathers, our fathers, meaning they were just as much Hebrew as he was. Do you get it yet? How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea. And we're all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea. What sea? The Red Sea. Remember when the... Did you ever see the movie, the, the Ten Commandments? The, the Red Sea opened up and Moses and Israel crossed upon dry land. There was a wall of water between them. Or, well, they were between a wall of water. This was the Corinthians people. The Corinthians, at least some of them, were divorced Israel that are under the new covenant with Christ in, in, in Jeremiah 31, 31. Think about it. That's why they don't want you reading Paul's writings. Don't read Paul's writings, they'll tell you. He was a false apostle. And you know what? God the Father sent Christ and Christ sent Paul. And if you don't accept Christ, uh, Paul, who Christ sent, you don't accept Paul, Christ either. That's right, because your Messiah is Yeshua HaMashiach. Well, my Messiah's name is Jesus, and he is the Christ. Verse 2, And we're all baptized into Moses, and in the cloud, and in the sea, and did all eat the same spiritual meat, 
the manna in the wilderness, remember? And did all drink the same spiritual drink. Remember Moses struck the rock and it gave water? Absolutely. Oh, you never read the book of Exodus? Well, how can you not read the book of Exodus and expect to understand any of this stuff? Go to Genesis 1-1 and start reading. You know what? If you average three chapters a day, reading three chapters a day in the Bible, you will have read the entire Bible in one year. Think about it. Do it. And did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. You strike the rock, and the rock's going to give you water, living waters. All right, where were we? Romans. Okay. Um, all right, Romans. All right, verse 28, uh, Romans 9, 28. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. And as Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left unto us a seed, children, we had been as Sodoma, Sodom, and been like unto Gomorrah. Remember, what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? Uh, they were celebrating the L and then the B, and then the G, and then the T, and then they got, uh, they had a little, um, they had a little cookout, yeah, a little cookout, sort of like uh, Pompeii. You ever hear about Pompeii, how it was Mount Vesuvius erupted and covered the entire city in hot volcanic ash? I heard a couple weeks before it happened, uh, they were killing all the Christians, and stealing their homes and businesses. And then they took a pig and crucified it and marched it through the city saying, this is Jesus, the earth pig. He's from Zeus, blah, blah, blah. Well, I don't know about the earth pig thing, but you get the idea. And then all the Christians left the city because they had to flee for their lives, the ones that weren't killed. A couple weeks later, Mount Vesuvius goes, whoosh. Next thing you know, 2,000 years later, Guess what? Well, around 2,000 years later, uh, they're digging up the sinners of Mount, uh, of, of uh, Pompeii. And by the way, Pompeii, uh, from what I understand, was a Jewess who was married to the Roman emperor. I'm not sure. I'm not sure about all my history. Okay. Um, you know, it's hard to know history when the historians lie to you, you know, so. All right. Oh, okay, let's go back to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere work, milk of the word, that ye may grow thereby, if so, ye have, uh, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, to whom coming as unto a lively stone, remember that rock is Christ, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Ye also as lively stones are built upon a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him, Christ, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious. But unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is become the head of the corner. Christ is the head of the corner of the church, people. Christ is the cornerstone of the church. Verse 8, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense, 
even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. Well, that applies to the unbelieving, right? Verse 9, let's talk about the believers. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Nation, that same word as Gentiles. It wouldn't say and holy Gentile, would it? Yeah. So they use the word nation. A peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you, who hath called you, who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people. Why? Because we were divorced. Jeremiah 3.8. Hosea chapter 1, which in time past were not a people, but now are the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Wow. So, I find this stuff so, this is so uplifting. All right, let's take a look at Acts chapter 11, the new name of believers. Acts 11, 25. Then departed Barnabas to Tarsus for to seek Saul. Saul changed his name from Saul to Paul. Verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church, not the sin, of Gog, but the church, and taught much people, and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. Christians, a new name, a new name for God's people. Wow. Wow. And in these days came prophets from Jerusalem unto Antioch. And that, dear people, I'm going to close out um, this Bible study on Colonel Jack Moore and his uh, 50 reasons why, uh, how to identify true Israel from the Bible alone. And... Uh, you know, I, this guy was, I, like I say, he was the most decorated soldier in the Korean War. And uh, he was part of the John Birch Society until, which was an anti-communist group, until he started finding out who was behind communism. And then all of a sudden they decided uh, they didn't want anybody like him in their well, telling the truth, actually, and then they told him to get lost, uh, disinvited him to all his speaking engagements. You know, when he was a famous guy bringing crowds, uh, they liked him. But when he started naming the you-know-whos, uh, no, 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 we can't have you here with us. So, uh, yeah, all these groups are basically controlled opposition. So, it's a shame. So... All blessings, praise, glory, and honor. In Jesus' precious name, amen. This is Chaplain Bob signing off.